Welcome, one and all, to the Long and Great Performance Hall here at Jazz FM 91, where tonight we are celebrating a very special release from some very special artists. The fabulous musical partnership of Dee Daniels and Denzel Sinclair shines brightly on their new recording, Let It Shine, Let It Shine, a collection of spiritual classics and uplifting music that showcases not only their talents, but also their hearts. And they're joining us live tonight from the Long and McQuaid Performance Hall with Rhapsodius on piano, Mike Downs on bass, as well as some very special guests here in the audience. We are so glad that they are here. Give yourselves a round of applause. Thank you for joining us. Now let's get to the music. Please welcome to Toronto and to the Long McQuaid Performance Hall here at Jazz FM 91, the incredible Dee Daniels and Denzel Sinclair. If you ever plan to motor west Travel my way, take the highway, that's the best Get your kicks on route 66 You know it winds yeah. from Chicago to L.A. More than 2,000 miles all the way Come on and get your kicks yes. on the Route 66. Now you go through St. Louis, Joplin, Joplin Missouri, Missouri, and Oklahoma City looks mighty pretty. You'll see Amarillo, Gallup, New Mexico, Flagstaff, Arizona. Don't forget by Nona, Kingman, Barstow, San Bernardino. Won't you get hip to this timely tip? Yeah. When you make that California trip Come on and get, get your kicks on Route 66 St. Louis, Joplin, Missouri, and Oklahoma City is mighty pretty. You see Amarillo, Gallup, New Mexico, Flagstaff, Arizona. Don't forget by Nona, Kingman, Barstow, San Bernardino. Won't you get hip to this timely tip when you make that California trip? Come on and get your kicks. On Route 66 Get your kicks On Route 66 One more time Yes Get your kicks On Route 66 
Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you very much indeed. As uh, was mentioned earlier, it's certainly an honor to be here with you. And uh, yeah, just to share this special occasion and spread positive vibes throughout the city and throughout the world. So we, uh, Dee and I have been working together on a show. It's a little thing with Dee and Nat and Natalie Cole. And so we're just doing a couple, a few songs from that uh, songbook. That was Route 66, of course. And we're going to continue with It Is Only a Paper Moon. Only. Yes. <laughs> Only a Paper Moon. Book. Yes. Here we go. <laughs> a one, two, uh, uh, uh. <laughs> Say it's only a paper moon Sailing over a cardboard sea But it wouldn't be make-believe If you believed in me ah. Say it's only a canvas sky Hanging over a muslin tree But it wouldn't be make-believe If you believed in me Without your love it's a honky-tonk parade Without your love It's a melody played on a penny arcade It's a Barnum and Bailey world Just as phony as it can be But it wouldn't be make-believe If you believed in me As it can be, but, but it, it wouldn't be make believe if you believe, if you believe, if you believe in me. Thank you very much. You know, I couldn't help thinking uh, Barnum and Bailey were all the circus. Has anyone seen the Cirque du Soleil? Uh, yeah? yeah? Did you like it? I've been meaning to, to go. Yeah. No. I haven't yeah, been to it. I've seen them, but oh, not, okay. not this particular uh, show. Yeah. Okay. Now I get to jump in. Speaking of That's circuses. Right. That's right. <laughs> How about this? Is this not wonderful? I want to go back a little bit because I know that, uh, you, Denzel, you mentioned you guys have been working together for a, little, a few years and on a few projects. How did you first start working together? The very first time? Mm -hmm. uh, the very first time we were um, invited by um, Rajan McWah at uh, Cap University, yeah. Cap College Cap then, College. Cap yeah. University right. now, yep. and uh, to do one of their um, annual concerts that they put on with uh, the the A big band there along with Nightcap, the uh, jazz, their jazz choir. Yeah, yeah. the yeah. Jazz, jazz choir, choir yeah. Uh, yeah. And, um, uh, but actually it goes back before I was then. thinking we were actually, yeah. I think it was Bramwell Toby invited us out to the Winnipeg, was it? Uh, Winnipeg? No, it, w it was before that. Okay. 
You know they've been working together well when they're just. Was it that? No, I think it was before that. Uh, no, no, okay, I, I know. Here's the de- here's <laughs> the right. definitive Noah answer. Noah and the yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so Denzel mm-hmm. was in town in Vancouver doing a show of Nat King Cole. Yeah, the unforgettable. The unforgettable right, right, show. Right, 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 right. And I had heard about Denzel, right? And I said, I must go see this young man. <laughs> and uh, I went down and, of course, was just blown out of my mind to the point where, you know, I'm usually actually a pretty shy person and reserved and quiet and, as you know, well, right? right? Mm-hmm. Okay. And, uh, and, but I had, I had to meet this guy, you yeah. know, because it was so good. He moved me. Right, mm-hmm. um, with his not only his voice but just with his presence, his what he, the, the energy that he put out. So seriously, m- my husband and I went backstage and we waited for all of those people that <laughs> were there. You take e transfer, is that? <laughs> <laughs> and that, so that was the first time, and and then we did the night, the night, the uh, Cap, yep, Cap Universe, College. and then Bramwell Toby yes. invited us to Winnipeg to do a. Sh- uh, Symphony Pops program yeah. together. Yeah. You both are active. You're both very active solo artists. How, the, how challenging is it to work in duo format? Does it come easily for both of you? I mean, they're, you're incredible artists and musicians, so I would imagine. But there's a certain something that comes along with that conversation you have as, as duo partners, yeah? Yeah. Uh, he's so easy. <laughs> You know, she and is, fun, is. and a little bit crazy. Mm-hmm. That's mm-hmm. necessary for me to get along with anybody. <laughs> they have to be just a little bit off, yeah, right? Let's get a little, <laughs> He's let's enough get a little off for sometimes. me to get along yeah. with. <laughs> yeah, you've been fortunate. We do, yeah. we do. The synergy's great, and mm-hmm. uh, you know, we have a certain spiritual bent as well. And yeah, it's we've been quite fortunate that we, you know, you resonate. And mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, I'm going to fangirl for a little bit with you, Dee. Um, Danzel, you already know I love you, but I, I, we met many, many years ago, but one of the things, if you have not yet heard, I think it's the Seattle Repertory Orchestra, with you were doing the music of uh, Duke Ellington. Oh, yeah, the sacred, the sacred music. music of yeah. Duke Ellington, mm-hmm. which is just outstanding. If you've not heard it, you need to check it out. Um, keeping in that realm, though, with the new album, which we're going to hear about, you know, hear more from in just a little bit, but... Um, how easily does this music work in the format? Because you got, you're trying to, you're going back to stuff that's been done for decades, if not centuries in some cases, and you've got to try to make it fit in a jazz format. How much, if any, square peg into round holes happened when you were coming up with these arrangements and these ideas? Uh, from my perspective, none whatsoever. Yeah. It, it was a natural flow, I mean, because for some reason, people still have a tendency to separate um, jazz and and spirituals, hymns, and but they're and blues too, for that matter. But they're all like a, a part of a triplet, uh, triplets. You know, uh, I was going to say cousins, but uh, at least brothers and sisters. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> you know, Family. seriously, Family. It, you know, one became from the other, that came from the other, and they they all share the same DNA. Mm. You know, it's just, uh, yeah. So it, it it for me personally, it, there was just fluid. Yeah. You know, it just fit. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, and th- I mean, I'll share the story again. I'll try to be quick. We uh, were just uh, debuting a, a pops show. Of uh, it's Nat and Natalie, but we didn't have a, an encore, so uh, and we debuted it in Florida. And anyway, so thir- you know, third night into it, um, we were getting the applause, the you know, ovations, and we were going back for our second bow. And on the way out, I I asked D, um, do you know Steal Away? And she was like, do you mean Steal Away to Jesus? And I said, yeah. So we went out and we 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 uh, did an impromptu a cappella version of Steal Away, and that. You know, it was well received, and, uh, and so much so that after we would go out after you know the show and people receive people f- signing CDs, merch, and things like that, that would be a tune that people commented quite often, quite frequently. In fact, you know, probably the most comments we got. So the idea was, well, why don't we do an entire show of this kind of stuff? Um, so we haven't yet to do the show, but the album came out of it, right? So <laughs> yeah, that's right. Yeah. So I came back to Vancouver, and I was talking to uh, Scott Morin, who is the marketing person for Seller Music, right? And uh, tell, and he said, forget the show, forget the show. You guys need to do a CD. You need to record a CD of hymns and spirituals, you know? 
and uh, was, um, okay, yeah, <laughs> that, yeah, that's a yeah, good yeah, idea. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Okay. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, you know, this was literally just before COVID, right? And then, of course, we were shut down on all of that stuff. But, uh, you know, after things, the borders started opening up again, uh, we went ahead and uh, we were able to bring up four musicians from the States. Um, and, you know, some people ask, well, you know, why did you go to the States? Well, to the, the, the honest, candid answer is we wanted to have uh, musicians that understood the context of the music. It's one thing to be able to read a chart, have skills and all that kind of stuff, but another thing to have lived and continue to live the context of the music. So that's that's what we did, you know, and uh, um, we added four uh, musicians from Calgary uh, for the horn section and uh, it, it was just a perfect blend. Love it. We're going to hear more from that album in just a little bit, but can we hear a little, another little bit of music from you both? Mm -hmm. Thank you very much. <laughs> Once again, live in the Long and McQuaid Performance Hall here at Jazz FM 91, D. Daniels and Denzel Sinclair. There was a boy, a very strange enchanted boy. They say he traveled very far, very far over land and sea. Just a little shy, sad of eyes. But very wise, very wise was he. And then one day, one magic day, he passed my way. And as we spoke of many things, fools and kings, this he said to me. The greatest thing you'll ever learn is just to love and be loved in return. my way and uh, as we spoke of many things fools and kings this he said to me D the greatest thing you'll ever learn is just to love and be loved in return just to love and be loved in return. I want to love and be loved in return. Come on, let me love and be loved. I want to love and be loved in return. Come on and let me love, you know I want to love and be loved in return. Hey, hey. 
Thank you. Thank you very much. Isn't she awesome? Ready? <laughs> Okie dokie, here we go. What a day this has been. What a rare mood I'm in. Why it's almost like being in love. There's a smile on my face for the whole human race. Why, it's almost like being in love. All the music I hear seems to be like a bell that is ringing for me. And from the way that I feel when that bell starts to peal I would swear I was falling I'd swear I was falling It's almost like being in love That is ringing for me and from the way that I feel when that bell starts to peal I would swear I was falling I would swear I was falling it's almost like being in love Thank you. 
We're going to give Rhapsodius and D a little break and feature myself and Mike Downs on one of my favorite uh, compositions by Harold Arlen. And I really like this tune because it, uh, for me, it's, it reminds me, it's about awareness, you know, that uh, if we just keep in our minds what we have. It's uh, the, the middle phrase, the middle last section, is, uh, it states that uh, life is a beautiful thing as long as I hold the string. And for me, the string is the awareness, you know? I'd be a silly so-and-so if ever I should let go. So I've got the world on a string. I've got the world on a string Sitting on a rainbow, got that string around my finger. What a world, what a life, I'm in love. I've got a song that I sing, and I can make the rain go anytime I move my finger. Lucky me, can't you see that I'm in love? Life is a beautiful thing As long as I hold that string I'd be a silly so and so If I should ever let go I've got the world on a string Sitting on a rainbow Got that string around my finger What a world a life I'm in love I've got the world on a string sitting on a rainbow Got that string around my finger What a world, what a life I'm in love I've got the song that I sing And I can make the rain go Anytime I move my finger Lucky me, can't you see that I'm in love Life is a beautiful thing As long as I hold that string I'd be a silly so and so If 
I should ever let go. I've got the world on a string, sitting on a rainbow. Got that string around my finger. What a world! What a life! What a world! What a life! I'm in love. <laughs> Thank you, Mike Downs. Mike Downs, I got the world on a string, and we are here in the Long and McQuaid Performance Hall at Jazz FM 91 with Denzel and D. Daniels. Now, you're both very, very positive people, and I know even, even off the top, Denzel, you talked about you know, spreading light and goodness and, and love in the world. Um, it's a business, you know? Yeah. This, this thing we do, it's a business. How do you maneuver through this business when it's not always light and happiness and everything, but you manage to inject goodness in? Do you have any practices, any mantras, anything that you keep with you in order to stay focused on the positivity in, in a world that's not always so positive? I have a, uh, a mantra that I um, created many years ago, mm -hmm. and uh, it is simply, um, I, I am a catalyst for source. Whatever that source is, I, it doesn't matter. I am a catalyst for source to touch everyone in ways that only source knows they need to be touched in that moment, period. That's why I get up here and everywhere and do this. It's not about D in the flesh and, and, and what I have uh, accomplished. or I don't care about any of that. I mean, it's nice, yeah, but that's, my motivation is to be just that. You okay. feel like you're a medium almost? Like a divining rod? Well, I don't sorts? know if I go that far with no. it, you know, but <laughs> I mean, because anybody can choose to do this. That's right. the thing. We all have choice, right? And that's what I choose to do, and I am blessed and totally grateful for the gift of music, and in particular voice, because we have the double blessing of words and the international language of music, mm. right? Yeah. Mm. Debs? Yeah, I mean, definitely that, you know, be an instrument for positivity. Um, again, it comes back to awareness as well, and... You know, there's an art of, of um, you know, like to recycle, you like to repurpose things. You know, life's a personal trainer in the sense that, uh, and it knows, you know, your personal trainer knows when, to, when you need to level up. So a lot of opportunities come in disguise and, uh, you know, the hardships or whatever that come, it, it's a, you know, every superhero goes through their thing, right? You have, you have your challenges and it, it does, it's an opportunity to, to get, to overcome and get better. Um, mm -hmm. And so I think, you know, as I shared earlier today, um, there's a phenomenon of circumstance whereby circumstances, situations, they arise and they persist for some time, could be shorter, could be long periods of time, but they always, always go away. We have that wisdom. We've all, ex we've lived through whatever hardships that we've had and we come out on the other side, you know, and, you know, after winter, is the spring without fail after you know what I mean after the day is the night also the, you know after the night is the day these are these cyclical things so if you can keep that in mind you know and uh, there's more to life than what we see there's always those kinds of things to remember right mm -hmm. yeah yeah I love that uh, although in Newfoundland there's no spring it just goes right from <laughs> two days of summer right yeah. into winter but but yeah. still I love the concept yeah yeah yeah, <laughs> yeah that's right yeah <laughs> Um, the, with this project, you know, has a specific theme. You've done the Nat, the Natalie project, with ha which has a specific theme. You go back to, you know, Ella and her songbooks, and F Sinatra did, you know, that sort of thing where he would do a whole torch song record. How important is it to have thematically based things somewhere in your career? Not necessarily consistently, but somewhere. 
have you noticed a change or, or has it added something to, to your life as an artist in doing something like this? Well, it, it gives us both uh, an opportunity to share with the world our, some of our personal thoughts, beliefs, and how we both seriously try to live our lives, mm. right? Um, we, one of the reasons why I think we have such a synergy is that we're both constantly um, discovering how to expand our uh, spirituality, you know, and um, this music, uh, <laughs> Denzel said earlier that, um, uh, how did you say that, Denzel, about, I, I, I grew up in church, right? And, and oh, I, yes, that? that's right. There's this, this saying, you know, like people talk about they grew up in the church, and I said, well, I had a day pass. <laughs> you know, I, just, I visited, but it was, it was still consistent, and, you know, a, a lot of the wonderful hymns and things that I'd heard mm -hmm. growing up, but, you know, the very, very fond memories and have a, yeah. Know, a yeah, so, so this, this particular CD is not about religion to mm -hmm. us at all. It's about uplifting uh, music. Um, as I said earlier, you know, we, we are blessed with uh, having um, uh, the power of words, right? and the international language of music, which is in itself is very powerful. So to use words that uh, we feel are uplifting and inspiring through the power of music is, it's a joy. It's, <laughs> I love it, you know, it's a joy. I remember one time um, working with uh, Joe Williams, we were in Cologne, Germany, and uh, he was so excited because he had just recorded his first uh, inspirational CD. And if you guys haven't heard that, you should just check it out. Mm. You know, b because it, it drew him back into that beginning that gave him uh, courage, it gave him strength, it gave him power, right? And he wanted, with all his might, before he left the planet, to be able to share, go back, gather that up, and put it right in people's face. Not, you know, we we draw on that stuff as we perform. Many many of us, I think, you know, and uh, but to be able to present it right in front is a whole other story. And this this uh, project gives us the opportunity to do that. You you D when you just mentioned the thing about it's not about you know about I think you said about religion. Religion, yeah. Is that was that ever a concern when you were planning this? Because you know, there, nope. there, sometimes there is that confusion between mm -hmm. spirituality and religion. Mm -hmm. No, not for, no. It was never not something enough. you worried about, or you oh, never had to. No, don't no. care. No. <laughs> 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 don't care. No. You know, it's, it's everybody the, has their opinion, their sure. choice, and God bless them. Right. You know, but for us, no. That it, it was about the music, you know, and the 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 the, the messages, you know, mm -hmm. uh, of of just hey, you know. It's all going to, it's going to be good. You're good. You know? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, you are listening to Jazz FM 91, and we are live in the Long and McQuaid Performance Hall with Dee Daniels and Denzel Sinclair, who uh, we're going to be sharing music from that album. In fact, we're going to play a track from it uh, to close off the show this evening. But I want I was reading the liner notes. I have a, the, the recording with me, and I loved what um, John Clayton wrote. First of all, I love that the very first line in the liner notes from Mr. Quincy Jones. No less. Um, but John said, <laughs> what would be the ideal musical environment in which to create magical performances? I've made a lot of recordings, played many concerts, and never would have imagined it would be to fly to Calgary, Alberta, Canada, live in a house with other musicians, wake up and record all afternoon and evening. But that's what happened. Yeah. For people who have never been in a studio, don't know what's involved, how... How was this process for you guys, and, and what was that like? Living, you were all living together, and you're all doing your thing, and in a, you know, in a quick turnaround. What was that like, Dad? I have to say one thing. Oh, yeah. please okay. go ahead. Yeah. No, no. Okay, so you got all of these guys, right? I'm the only woman, right? <laughs> we're we're living in this beautiful place where we each have our <laughs> own bedrooms, and and we ha there's a chef on board. You know, well before the chef was on, the reason the chef was we, on board yeah, is would. because. I'm thinking before I go to Calgary, now I'm the only woman there, and you know, 
I would be the cook by default, <laughs> right? So I don't want, you know, that ain't gonna happen, right? <laughs> so I gotta, you know, get this straight right now. So I told the seller music, I said, you guys gotta hire a chef because I don't want anybody to even start to think that I might be preparing meals. Okay, so now dance. No, that's great. And, and that turned out to be, that was a, one of the greatest decisions ever because I think for me, in fact, a highlight, I don't know, I could almost say it was the highlight of, of the whole time that we were there, was the dinner that we had. We had a couple of some of the sponsors that came by and we had this wonderful assembly of people, all the musicians there and the, the contributors and uh, just and the, the, the wonderful spread there and just the feeling of togetherness and community and, you know, that was the last thing I thought, you know, when I pitched the idea of like, why don't we do, a, you know, a pops concert, a spiritual music, the last thing I thought would be having like a group, this sort of like supper with a bunch of people, but, you know, uh, that was the intent for to gather people together and have a good time, you know, so maybe that wasn't how I envisioned it, but it was still a wonderful uh, uh, moment, mm -hmm. you know, I really, really enjoyed that. Yeah. It's, it's yeah. No, it, yeah. it was great. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Well, when you think about it, nourishing, nourishing your bodies, your yeah. souls, I mean, you were kind of getting nourishment all over the place, really, in that yeah. way. Uh, how much input did you both have when you were putting this all together in terms of, you know, choosing musicians, songs that you were going to do? I know that, that John Clayton did uh, the arrangements. Mm -hmm. um, how much work went into and input went into planning it before you actually got to that house and that studio to make the record? A lot. Yeah. <laughs> and, yeah, and you know, I mean, D Denzel and I are both seasoned musicians and, um, you know, and we... We know what works for us. We and because we've worked together, we know what works for us as a as a team, you know. And um, so yes, th and that was not not a problem, not a question ever. You know, we needed to do music that was uh, that we felt in our spirit, right? And that was no problem to choose those songs, you know. And then to put the band uh, together. Um, there was no doubt, uh, you know, about that either, because of, of the whole context thing. We 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 knew we needed people that that understood the context of this kind of music. Yeah, and and some of the uh, a few of the ideas that uh, came out were we we approached John with. Mm -hmm. So so we had a hand in the arrangement as well, arrangements yeah. of mm -hmm. the of the tunes, of the mm -hmm. vibe, the groove. Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, yeah. So it was a much, very much a collaborative thing, and uh, mm -hmm. you know, and. You know, we had, you know, I would say we almost had final say. If we if we weren't happy with any decisions, like even musician wise, we could we could have kiboshed the whole thing if we wanted to. But <laughs> <laughs> we, we um, because I, mean, I would imagine the musicians were chosen for specific reasons, context, of course. Yeah. But each of them would have brought something. Oh yeah, I mean, you know, you have the great John Clayton. Mm. I mean, you know. It, it doesn't get any better than that, except for maybe Mike here. Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> no, but just as good, just different, right? Mm -hmm. so, but anyway, uh, and John and I have known each other for many, many, many years, right? He's like my other brother, right? Um, and then, uh, who is a bass player, by the way, just for those who may not know, uh, incredible arranger, composer, big band leader, orchestra. You, he's done everything, right? At, everywhere around the world. Uh, and then we had Herlin Riley, who was the drummer from New Orleans. Well, I mean, <laughs> Herlin sunk us right into where we needed to go on every single tune, right? Um, and then uh, Bobby Floyd, who uh, is Oregon. from Columbus, Ohio, an, an organist extraordinaire and I, I know you have some words to say about Bobby <laughs> you know well he did play it thing is he he played with Ray Charles as well right mm, yeah. yeah oh yeah. a whole bunch yeah. of people yeah yeah but Bobby came right out of the church and then went into jazz and blues and other kinds of music but um, Bobby and I were in a we had a pops program a symphony pops program along with um, Wycliffe Gordon, trombonist, and um, uh, Byron Stripling, trumpet player. And it was an all blues program. The show began with Bobby on Hammond B3 organ for 10 minutes, yeah. playing like, oh my God. <laughs> you know, I mean, I, I'm in the wings as 
other people back there, and it's just, you know, hands raised, <laughs> waving in the air, and just trying not to act like those old ladies in, in the church that I grew up in. <laughs> when something was really good to them, they want to take their pocketbooks and hit people with them. <laughs> <laughs> stuff like that. That's how I grew up, right? Yeah. And that's what I wanted to do to Bobby every time, you know. I love it. <laughs> and he did the same thing. We we performed a concert just before the recording session, and uh, it started out with like ten minutes of of Bobby setting the tone. And honestly, you could have just listened, you know, listened to him all night. And he's such mm -hmm. a, a you know humble individual, but uh, with the music, yeah, the mu musicality is just. Uh, Incredible. One of my favorite moments is the solo he does on one of the, well, yeah. <laughs> In other words, <laughs> y'all need to pick tenderly. up the record. Yeah, yeah, yeah. that's yeah. right. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, can we ask you to go back to the song that kind of started it all, if you don't yes, mind? the very we'd first love to duet do that. that you did. Sure. All right. Right here, live from the Long and Great Performance Hall, Jazz FM 91. One more time, give it up for Dee Daniels and Denzel Sinclair. <laughs> Steal away, steal away, steal away to Jesus, steal away. Steal away home. I ain't got long to stay here. Steal away. Steal. Steal away, steal away, steal away to Jesus. Steal away, steal, steal away, steal away home. Got long to stay My Lord, My he calls Lord, me He calls me He calls me by the thunder Calls me by the thunder the, the trumpet sound within my, my soul. soul. I ain't got long to stay. To stay. I said, steal away, steal away, steal away to Jesus, steal away to Jesus. Why don't you steal, steal away? away, steal, steal away, steal away.
Thank you. Dee Daniels. Denzel Sinclair. Got to wait for the chills to die down here because my hair is all standing on end. What did you, each of you learn from working on this project and on this record, as as people or and or as artists? Love mm. is the answer. Yeah. 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 Absolutely. 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 Yeah. Love, acceptance. Perseverance, mm. you know, yeah. There's a Prince tune on here. Yeah. How did you choose that one? Oh, I got a, had a crazy notion one day. <laughs> I, I, I I love Prince. My only regret is that I never had an opportunity to see him live. But um, and that particular song, I, when I heard him uh, sing it, you know, I was watching a YouTube thing of a live performance. It just moved me, you know, and it, I had lost a friend, uh, you know, recently th uh, at that time, and yeah, it just moved me, and I just, I said, how many people lose people, you know, so maybe there's something in uh, the lyrics of this song that could be uh, helpful, you know, of somebody going through loss. Mm. I think this whole album is helpful in so many ways. I think in a world that you know, we're living in right now, we need positivity yeah. and love and perseverance and acceptance and all of those other words. And so uh, on, a, on a personal note, I'm just so glad you did it. I, and I remember watching on social media back at the beginning when people were posting things and remember thinking, oh, I can't wait to hear what happens here. <laughs> so I'm so glad that you brought it here to Toronto, to, uh, to Jazz FM 91 and to this audience. Thank, Thank you, you for so making very it possible, Absolutely. all of you, Danny. And we're going to get you to do one more tune live if you don't mind and then we're going to go off on a, a tune from the album but before we do that I just want to thank a few people first of all uh, to the team here at Jazz FM 91 yes. Glenn Cross and David McTeague and Jelani Watson and Danny Elwell and everybody for for all the work if you're listening at home and you are a supporter of Jazz FM 91 I want you to know how important you are to us we thank you so very much and certainly we thank the people who are joining us here in the Long and Bequade Performance Hall thank you so very much we can't do this without you. Of course, to these outstanding musicians on piano, Rapsodius over there. Rapsodius. On the bass, Mr. Mike Downs. And of course, please keep the love going for our very special guests tonight. Dee Daniels, Denzel Sinclair. Heather Brambrick. Uh, can, can you help us feel the spirit? Okay, every time. every time. Here they are, one more time for the Long Overhead Performance Hall. Every time I feel the spirit moving in my heart, I will pray. Upon the mountain, my Lord spoke. Out of his mouth came fire and smoke. Looked all around me, it looked so fine. I asked my Lord if all was mine. Every time I feel the Spirit moving in my heart, I will pray. Every time I feel the Spirit in my heart, I will pray. Well, there ain't but one train moving on this track, and it runs to heaven, and it runs right back. If I behave, they will let me ride. I'll have a home there when I get inside. Every, Every time, time I feel the spirit moving in my heart, I will pray. I will pray
consistent. Yeah. Thank, you. Thank you very much. Rap Sodius, Mike Downius, Dee Danielis, Heather Bamberg. Thank you. Thank you.